Mo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today we got ourselves a steel column welding project. Uh, we've got four three inch square tube by 0.25, which is quarter of an inch thick square tubes. And we're gonna be welding some three quarter inch steel plate to the bottoms of those. And we've got two six inch square by 0.375, which is three eighths of an inch thick. And um, we're gonna be welding some one inch thick plate to the bottom of these. And we're going to be using the SMAW shielded metal arc welding process where most of us here in the United States commonly refer that to stick welding or arc welding. So, with that said, let's get started. Alright, so what we're doing here is we're starting out by, by getting the mill scale off the, the steel itself. Uh, you know, I just got a flap disc right here. And I'm catching all four sides or all uh, connecting areas where the welds are going to be. Uh, the mill scale is sometimes okay, but it is best to have clean metal when you're, when you're uh, trying to make a weld and try to get some good adhesion, some penetration right here. And that's, that's what I'm uh, trying to achieve. You know, it wasn't too bad on the columns themselves. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if the mill scale is different on the steel column versus the plate. But, uh, you know, that comes off really nice right here on the steel columns, but you'll see it's a little bit different on the plate. And I don't know if that's just the way they're fabricated uh, and the plate is fabricated. Uh, it just seems to be a little bit tougher. You can see that I started with a flap disc right here, and, and I'm just not biting through at all on this plate, barely. It's just it's more like it's polishing it than it is uh, cutting it. You, I ultimately had to go to my grinder uh, to get that to get the mill scale off and then I finished it up with the flap disc you'll see here in just a minute again I'm just trying to make it so I can have good uh, adhesion and good penetration there's the grinder that 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 seemed to do the trick uh, but uh, anyways I got that done and uh, get things propped up this is the reason why I got my welding table the same height as my workbench just uh, makes everything with long sock work well Okay, so today we're going to be using the uh, powerful Everlast uh, PowerArc 300 ST and a couple things I want to note and one of them is just um, how robust and how heavy duty this ground clamp is. Uh, let's say as comparable to um, this one right here which is on the plasma cutter and a similar ground clamp to uh, both my um, MIG and TIG welding machines. Look at the size of this thing. and. The cable size, look at the difference there. And this thing is so strong, it almost takes two hands to actually have to operate this thing. Now I know probably because it's a 300 amp stick welding machine, uh, you know, we've got the super heavy duty stuff. But another thing I want to, uh, to note is the machine burns a lot hotter than the other two machines that I have. And I don't know if it's because those are dual purpose machines, this is a dedicated stick welding machine. Uh, maybe the amperage is different. But, uh, you know, there's about 20 amps difference right here, uh, burning the same, uh, let's say, uh, 7018, 1 8 inch uh, 7018. Uh, both men of the machines burning at about 120, 125 amps, pretty good. Uh, this one here at about 110 amps or 107 amps, something like that, for the equal amount of rod. Um, but, hey, it is what it is. Um, so far, I like it. It works pretty good. Let's get started. All right, so we're getting ready to get started here. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that I like to use on this to anti-splatter is this PAM. Uh, I got this from my good friend Jody Collier, Welding Tips and Tricks. You spray this stuff on right here, and uh, that really helps reduce any splatter or BBs that you may build up on this thing. Make for a really clean weld. All right, so here we are. We're going to be jumping around here a little bit, and I just want to show you a couple of different arc shots and a couple of different uh, techniques and, and how I'm doing this. Uh, you can see that uh, <clears throat> I'm holding a really tight arc in here. Uh, this is uh, one of the initial first passes on uh, the three-inch steel column, and you can see how tight I'm holding that arc. Uh, again, uh, the positioning that I'm holding the rod, is, you know, right about 45 degrees uh, on an angle and you know pretty much straight up and down running parallel uh, along the along the beam itself all the way to the end i just follow it right on around the corner and break off the bead right at the corner there 
Anyways, that worked out really good. That's what this finished product is supposed to look like. Now, those of you guys that know that uh, using 7018s are hard to restart, so it's nice to have a file sitting around and uh, just uh, kind of, you know, file that, that flux right down to the, to the electrode itself. It makes for a much easier arc start. Now, here is, uh, you can see the manipulation that I'm doing. I'm a little bit back and forth right here on this. This is actually a shot from the third pass of the six-inch column. Um, and I'm just trying, this is the final pass on that particular column. And I'm just trying to, uh, you know, get, get full coverage across there. And a lot of times I like to use my hand uh, to steady the rod as I'm going, especially when you get a new rod in there. You want, uh, you want it to be as steady as you can. And here's a shot of the first pass, actually, uh, of the six-inch column uh, before I started the second and the third pass. It just went around the whole column. And that's kind of what that looked like. And then right here, you see that the, the plate looks like it is not square to the column. And in fact, that, that's a, the case. The, the, the column itself was cut crooked, and that, that's the way I received it. But I just had to be sure that the base plate was square. So that's why there was a little bit of a gap right there. Um, it ended up being square to the column after I was done with it. Again, here are some, uh, just some regular shots right here, trying to get... Uh, you know, some shots. This was after the second bead that I laid in on the top right there. Uh, you know, getting about a third of the coverage over top of the first bead. And then this was the third bead uh, where I was doing that manipulation. And this is the finished, actual finished product here. So I've got the first, second, and third beads um, in this shot right here on. And that's pretty much the way it went uh, all the way around both columns. Um, with the three pass method these right here are just uh, tab bolts that are welded on for the framer uh, he's going to ultimately bolt a two by six or two by eight uh, to two sides of the column so i'm just uh, welding these bolts on right here so he has something to bolt to and this is a 6013 at 330 seconds rod and i'm just using for that and here we are finishing it up. This is the uh, probably the uh, second or third pass on the very last column right here. Uh, and again, you just try to show you the way I position myself and the way I, I hold myself in there. And that's it for the Power Arc 300 ST. And now we go to the Power iMig 205. We're going to switch processes here a little bit. Uh, these are the end caps for the three inch combs. They are cast iron and uh, welding to mild steel. I'm using the uh, MIG uh, gun for this. A little bit different process and you know welding cast iron always sometimes is a bit of a challenge. It's just almost like pot metal and I'm just adjusting the the wire feed speed here a lot and and the amps trying to get everything just right but uh, ultimately it's all going to get ground off anyway so uh, that worked out pretty good. And then this is the top cap on the six inch column. This is what's going to be holding the beam in place. And we just did a single pass all the way around right here with the MIG gun. That worked out really good and finished up really nice. And there's the finished product and that's what they both looked like when it was all. So basically this video was to uh, show you guys a couple of different methods and a little bit of technique uh, on how to stick weld. Um, the columns there they are all installed everything worked out perfectly so i hope this video was helpful to you guys thanks for watching don't forget to rate comment and subscribe for more video and don't forget to follow me on instagram at jimbo's garage see you next time on jimbo's garage